This video is part 2 in a series where I take a look at the history of all four LMDH chassis manufacturers, their origins, cars and previous successes. In this video I'll be covering one of the two manufacturers from France, Ligier. Guy Ligier was a privateer F1 driver and rather successful rally and sports car racer. Some of his most notable achievements were several class wins at endurance races in 1967 together with his dear friend Joe Slesser. Together they won the 1000 km of Monza in their class and won the 12 hour of Rams overall behind the wheel of a Ford GT40 Mark II. Sadly he would lose that friendship in 1968 when Joe died at the French GP in his F1 debut. The sudden loss of Schlesser immediately prompted Ligier to stop his racing career for good. He and Schlesser always talked about building a car themselves to compete with in sports car racing, so that's what Guy Ligier set out to do. Just a year later his little company produced the Ligier JS1 with the JS name being a tribute to Joe Slesser. It was an ambitious small mid-engine sports car aimed for the open road and racetrack. A road-going version was never released however, and it only competed in a handful of races for just over a year. A variety of engines was used ranging from a Cosworth Formula 2 four-cylinder to the Cologne V6 from the Ford Capri. Its follow-up, the JS2, would attempt to improve on every aspect. Ford had stopped supplying Ligier with engines, which forced him to look elsewhere. He founded with Citroën, who just recently acquired the Maserati brand and agreed to supply Ligier with the Maserati-developed V6 engine from the Citroën SM. For the race version, the Maserati engine was tuned up to produce 300 horsepower and three cars were entered in the 1972 24 Hours of Le Mans. Sadly, none managed to finish the race, all retiring with engine-related issues. For 1973, Ligier got some financial backing from Citroën, which resulted in improved front and rear bodywork and even more horsepower being extracted from the Maserati V6. Two factory teams and one privateer JS2 were entered in that year's Le Mans 24 hours. The privateers were the only one to finish the race, as the factory cars both retired, again with engine issues. For 1974, the JS2 managed its first win in Le Mans 4 hour race. At the big 24 hour race later in the year, it managed to finish 8th overall, which was its best result yet. Finally, the racing season was ended on a high note at the Tour de France Auto a road racing event throughout France with several stops along major circuits, with first and second place overall going to Ligier JS2. It was a sign of things to come. For the 1975 24 hours of Le Mans, a major update came in the form of the Cosworth DFE V8. The proven F1 engine replaced the highly strung and unreliable Maserati V6. With now at least 400 horsepower available, the JS2 was in its most competitive form yet. It also managed its best result, as after a hard-fought battle with the Gulf Mirage of Jackie X and Derek Bell, drivers Jean-Louis Lafosse and Guy Chasseuil finished just a lap down in second position overall in their JS2. It was to be the final race of Ligier in sports car racing, as Guy Ligier had acquired all the assets of the Matra F1 team. Satisfied with the Tour de France win and the Le Mans podium, he pulled out of endurance and sports car racing and solely focused on the new Ligier F1 team. Since I'm focusing on the sports car racing aspect of Ligier, I'll keep its F1 story short. Also, their entire 20 years of F1 racing is just too much to cover for this video. Ligier was initially a decently competitive team, and although the Matra team was gone, Ligier still used Matra engines up until the 1979 season. Ligier's most noteworthy achievement in its early F1 years was winning the Swedish Grand Prix in 1977 with Jacques Lafitte. That was the first time a French car with a French engine and a French driver won an F1 race. This top act of patriotism got them a plethora of new French sponsors. These sponsors though would eventually all fade away when the performance and results faded as well. Throughout the late 80s and early 90s the once proud team kept getting less and less points. Numerous engine deals came and went with the cars being powered by stuff from Alfa Romeo, Megatron rebadged BMW engines, Judd, Cosworth, Lamborghini, Renault and Mugen Honda. In 1993 Guy Ligier sold the team to Cyril de Rouvre, which in turn sold the team again in 1994 to Flavio Briatore and Tom Walkinshaw. What followed was the last faint hurrah for Ligier in F1 with a couple podiums in 1995 and an unlikely win at Monaco with Olivier Panis in 1996. The team was eventually sold again to Alain Prost who turned it into the Prost Grand Prix team. During Ligier's stint in F1, the brand also started producing road cars, or rather small micro cars. These don't require a driver's license and will only go up to 45 km an hour. They're decently popular amongst old people and the kinds of people who don't bother with learning to get a driver's license, so they have quite a reputation. 
Nevertheless, DJ is somewhat of a market leader when it comes to microcars and that part of the business is still going strong today with various models available. The Ligier brand had been out of the racing world for years now, but in 2004 Guy Ligier bought a significant amount of shares of Automobile Martini, a small French Formula 3 constructor that had been losing ground to industry giants Reinhardt and Dallara. After a couple of single-seaters, Ligier returned to sports car racing with the introduction of the JS49 in 2006, an entry-level cn Plus prototype. Guy Ligier went on record saying that he sees lots of potential in the prototype racing world and was keen on pursuing a future of creating more of them. He was onto something. This idea of venturing further into the prototype racing world was rapidly accelerated when Ligier agreed to partner with the French Oak Racing and their constructors department Onrook Automotive in 2013. Boss of Onrook, Jacques Nicolet, was the first buyer of a Ligier JS49 back in 2006 and he and Guy Ligier had become friends ever since. Onrook was already busy developing their new LMP2 car and due to the partnership this car was released as the Ligier JSP2. In 2015, Guy Ligier died at the age of 85, having lived a life fully dedicated to motorsport. When Jacques Nicolet wanted to fuse all of his brands under one name, it didn't take him long to pick one. So as of 2019, the French Onrook Automotive, Oak Racing, Sodemo and Torque Engineering all merged into Ligier Automotive. What Guy Ligier did for Joe Schlesser, Jacques Nicolet did for Guy Ligier, to carry on his name and all of the cars his company would build. Ligier now is a prototype racing household name the only manufacturer to provide a car for all levels of prototype racing. From the entry-level CN prototype GS53, the so-called LMP4 JSP4, the popular GSP320 LMP3 car, the LMP2 GSP217, the soon-to-be Lamborghini LMDH car and the Peugeot Hypercar, which they helped develop and create. Aside from the Lambo, which doesn't exist yet, and the Peugeot, which has only just started racing, every other DGA has seen various successes around the world. One of the most noteworthy achievements was in 2016 when the JSP2 became the first French car to achieve overall victory at the 24 hours of Daytona. The future looks bright for Ligier, with the Peugeot Hypercar and Lamborghini LMDH ready to fight for overall wins. The chances of seeing a Ligier developed car back on the top step of the overall podium will probably be sooner rather than later. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on the next one.